Well, welcome. Uh, we're going to get started, and I'm hoping uh, this will be super kind of interactive and asking some questions um, of you guys and from you guys. Um, and to kind of start off the interactive portion, oh, and does everybody know this is David Brown and William Colson, and I'm Tommy Sabiga, so good to see you guys. Um, so today we're going to be mostly talking about in essence, prospecting, follow-up, system, CRM, kind of the, the nuts and bolts of what it looks like to be a realtor day in, day out. And so um, I think I stole this from Ben Rogers many years ago, where I usually say in real estate, there's the job and there's the business. The job is going to inspections, writing contracts, negotiating, um, showing houses, that's the job the business is generating leads uh, and you can't have a job without a business and so part of the generating leads um, and then being employed is going to come out into the, the follow-up prospecting and um, so forth and so on so with that being said I may have already kind of given out some of my answer but why do we prospect or one is one is prospecting. Why do we prospect? Why do we follow up? What do you think? Sell houses. To sell houses. Yeah. Good. Why else should we, should we prospect, or why do we follow up? Prospect to find leads. Yeah. Prospect to find leads. Anybody know where the word prospect comes from? Gold mining. Gold mining. Yeah. So remember prospecting for gold? What did, what did miners do? Like the old prospectors, what did they do? Dig. Dig, yeah. <laughs> what else do you know about gold miners? You gotta sift through the dirt. <laughs> yeah, you gotta sift through a whole lot of dirt to find the little golden nuggets, right? And so um, so that's, a, that's in essence at least why I think there is this whole notion of, of prospecting and following up is is going back to the terms of, of gold mining, which is you gotta sift through a bunch of, of dirt and, and gravel to find the good nuggets, and maybe it leads you to somebody else who already is that lead source. But um, everybody know the Pareto principle? You probably just have heard it in a different way, the 80-20 or the vital rule principle. Anybody wanna take a stab at what the Pareto principle states? The 80-20 rule? You guys know about the 80-20 rule, right? 80% yeah, it's used in all sorts of uh, facets. The uh, Wikipedia definition of Pareto principle is roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes, or those causes is the vital few. So 80% of consequences uh, from 20% of the causes. So in other words, 80% of your results come from 20% of your effort. 80% of your results come from 20% of your effort. 80% um, of all real estate sales in Richmond come from 20% uh, uh, the top, you know, top 20% realtors. It's statistically proven time and time again in almost all different facets. But uh, the way I like to think about it is that then means you need to have five times as much effort. If it's only 20% of your effort that gets you 80% of your results, you need to have five times more effort um, to get you those results. So another question, and then we're gonna kind of check, get um, each of us kind of share a few things of how we use systems and, um, and do follow, but why do we need a system? What do you think? Or do you need a system? Who needs a system to follow? We forget up? things and yeah. we need something to keep us organized and keep us on track and to remind us to do these things yeah so you don't forget things so you can stay organized why else do we need a system to keep track of results keep track of results yeah that's good keep track of customers conversations yeah everything customers conversations their wants their needs their timeline um, anybody know somebody who's going to buy a house uh, at the beginning of 2023? You do? Who? Who 
who's the person? Do you know? Like, do you have it written down? What's, what's your plan? Like, are they going to forget about you in 2023? Are you going to forget about them in 2023? Which do you think is more likely? They're going to forget about you. Depends on, depends on your system. If you have a good system and you know that they're going to be buying something in 2023, hopefully you're, you're not going to forget about that. Um, they, they might forget about you because they they're not going to have a system to follow up with you. Uh, but it's the, the, the old saying, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you'll keep getting what you've been getting. And so um, the idea of, that I kind of wrote down there is it's a bit of a shifting of a market that sellers actually have to try houses. Anybody see this yet? Sellers actually have to try to sell their houses nowadays, right? Like you actually have to vacuum and What's like that? put away dishes. Like, yeah, there, there's an attempt that has to be made to, to sell houses. They don't just fly off the shelf within minutes of, of uh, hitting MLS. Uh, but the same is true for realtors. You're gonna actually have to try to sell houses um, now. Um, and you're gonna actually have to try to get business. So that's why we want to, so I wanted to start with kind of the why. Why do we do this stuff? I think we all, all know it. I'm reading a book right now that um, it's talking about just how to be in shape and be healthy. And, it, and it's one of those things of everybody knows you're supposed to eat more vegetables. Do we eat more vegetables? Not really. We know we're supposed to, um, but we don't really. So I think we all know we're supposed to prospect. We know we're supposed to follow up, but do we actually do it? Uh, and hopefully you'll leave today with at least some some little gold nuggets of how you can actually implement it. So I thought I would kind of start with, and maybe we'll do your PowerPoint. I don't know how this might uh, weave together, but I thought um, between the three of us, and, and this is kind of the takeaway of, we all use essentially the same CRM system. We're all realtors. We all work at Hometown Realty, but we do follow up and prospecting very differently. And so hopefully, um, that kind of shows there might be some similarities, but there also might be some differences. And um, even though we use the same CRM system, I'm hoping too that you'll walk away with some of the habits or some of the mindset or philosophy of some things that you can employ yourself. Um, and actually, before I show the, uh, before we kind of talk about this, this is my original CRM system. Um, you like this one? Yeah. So old, old school. This is my CRM system. I had note cards for everybody that I, I knew in my life, and I was able to put some labels on them, like from you know making an Excel sheet. But then other ones, it was just people that I met. And so I'd write their name, their contact information, their email address. I'd write some notes about them. This person lives in Rutland. They would like to buy in Summer Duck, and I showed them a house in Hickory Hill. And then on the back, I would kind of track my follow-up phone calls. So this was my original CRM system. Well, what's, what's wrong with this system? What do you think? What could what could one negative of this system be? You lose it. <laughs> you lose it. Yeah. Yeah. Not very efficient. Probably yeah. Probably not all that efficient. What if I want to invite somebody to Santa Claus is coming to uh, our Mechanicsville office on December first? How would I invite somebody? I'd have to kind of email that. Yeah, I'd have to like data put some in some emails and stuff so not a great system but still a system nonetheless some of you guys don't even have this so hopefully um hopefully we can, can convict you a little bit and get a little bit more organized but uh let's start with david and have him share um how he uses prospecting on a on, what's your weekly schedule look like <coughs> stand up too uh -huh. okay <laughs> yeah so what's your week look like when does it start how does it relate to um, having a database or, or a CRM? Uh, I just keep it very simple. Um, I have four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, where I'm in the office, usually two to three hours. Mm -hmm. Usually more like three. Um, Monday, because I do open houses, I, I onboard everything into every single prospect that, that I might have talked to who's not represented by an agent. I'll get their name and all their information that I can, and I'll get that in there. Sometimes I don't get everything, but I'll put what I got, what I have. <coughs> and then um, it goes from there to very simply uh, kind of looking at the things from the weekend and working on that on Monday. Um, we also have a team meeting, which does you know take up a little of that time. But Tuesday is the day when I start really hitting the phone 
and for me that is what I do. It's whatever you do to, you know, it may not be phone, it might be your emails or your social media, I don't know, but at least I can track it. And then each person that I actually make a touch with for a call or a email, it's, I track it there so I know the last time I spoke and talked to them or did whatever and I put notes of whatever that happened if I happen to be talking to them. And then I move on. And it's the same way, um, usually Thursday, when Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I just do the open houses and take notes and go on shows. And that's pretty much what I do. All right, so you're saying Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, what are some questions we could ask them about that schedule? What do you think? Just some questions. What would you want to know about Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday? You know, are you calling, are you emailing, texting? Yes. <laughs> um, they, it's funny because it depends. Um, our action plan that Tommy has loaded into uh, Follow Up Boss tend to, if you pick the, the those action plans well, what ends up happening is is it tells you what to do next. It to, oh send him a text. Oh call him. Now again sometimes oh well wait a second I just called him two days ago so we and that's one done. So you just the tasks just come up because you've assigned action plans to each one of your prospects. And if you've done that, then you, you know, uh, basically you just follow that plan. There's also a third level which has to do with, I'm not, that's not enough. I have a board in my office which has all the current deals and listings and, and, and listings that are coming in my office. And I, also, I always, I'm looking at that just seeing, oh my goodness, I have a thing to do. Another thing about follow-up bosses, it has the ability to tell you not only when to prospect, but when this, oh my goodness, the EMD check is due because uh, I closed, or I, I signed a deal, so that's the next thing. Um, it keeps me organized, and I'm, I'm notoriously unorganized. So I need that, um, but that's just me. Yeah, so it's a little bit of everything, calls, texts, emails um, and David does something I think really cool too because even with technology he still has a notepad and is writing some stuff and then you keep your tally marks where are your tally marks it's so simple that, that even I can understand it I just make a cross on a piece of paper and my goal every day is to talk to talk interact with at least 10 people or actually have a conversation regarding the subject of real estate it sounds easy it's harder than it sounds um, and basically in the top left, I make all the calls or texts or emails. They all count as, a, as an outgoing touch. I try to do this and then I log that result. So what I'm looking for is down here. It is on the bottom of the left, I just, the number of people I actually talk to or speak to or get a response from. Even a, hey, I'm too busy right now. Can I? I just want them to respond, that's my goal. And the top right is number of uh, listing appointments I get. The bottom is number of buyer appointments I get. My goal is to get two appointments every day, and I am miserably short of that, but I try. Mm -hmm. So just to go like shorthand on a little notepad, he's kind of tracking that stuff, and so it's essentially attempts, you know, so, uh, you know, those are just kind of outbound calls, texts, but like you don't actually get somebody on the phone, and then he has a, his own personal goal of actually talking to and interacting with 10 people, and then also tracking appointments, um, and we'll talk about Kind of appointments and scoring and stuff too specifically with follow-up boss but what other questions would you want to know about david's schedule those four days a week what would be a good question to ask him how about at your open houses i mean i know you like to get that information and incorporate it through the week um and we all know there's different strategies to trying to get information from potential buyers coming in um, you know, what strategy do you like to use to make sure you it's capture your information? It's very simple. When I go to an open house, I'm as nice and I try to be as relaxed as I can be, even though that wasn't always the case. <laughs> this scares me sometimes. I mean, I gotta tell you, but, um, but going in there, what I've learned is, I mean, I hear all kinds of techniques to get them to say, pretty simple. <laughs> How'd you hear about us? And who are you working with? And how long? And I don't just go into that. I go, how long have you been looking? Oh, well, we just started looking last week. That's an opportunity. If someone says, no, I've been looking for a while. And I, the next question is, 
wow, how many offers have you had? Have you put in and been rejected? Or how many offers have you? That way I can already pre-qualified and I know that that person is, and I'm <coughs> gonna be polite, but I don't care. If I'm, if there are three more people coming in, I wanna you know, move on to the next person and ask them the same basic kinds of questions. Just, hey, go with it. And also, please come back and sign in, only because I really want my, my listing person to know what your thoughts were so I can kind of tell them maybe what we need to work on so that they can help. So I'd really appreciate that if you, you know, kind of troubleshoot that for us and then let me know. Or you might come down here and say, you know what, Dave, I'll take it. Be fine, I'll help. Still hasn't happened. So if you get all their information on Monday, what's your follow-up plan? Well, on Monday? it depends on how, what the situation is. But essentially, I will send a text, um, I'll send something out later that day. Just to say, man, thanks for stopping by. I can't wait to speak with you. I'll do everything that I said. I'm usually I'm just like I'll set up a a, a portal for you. Um, you know, we'll get you going on that and see if you like it. Um, and then um, Monday is usually, Monday morning is my my 8:30 to 9:30 is just getting everything in to follow up boss and then seeing what I what I need to do with those to make them active as clients. And then I can't wait to text them or call them then Monday morning and say, hey, I've done this just like I said. Have any questions, anything I can do for you, here's my number. You know, and also on every text I send, I include, you know, name, a realtor, just to remind them who I am. Uh, I'll, I'll ask some key questions that I don't think anybody else is asking just yet. When, um, during the day, are you doing Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday? Same time. And I used to try and bury it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make any difference. So morning or like absolutely at morning. At night. I I'm, I'm out the door early, but I get to the office at nine. So that's gonna be my next question. Where are you doing all this? <clears throat> office, because I have an office that Colton invited me to join him in, <laughs> and he's never there, so I can usually call him <laughs> because he likes wherever he is. And I do not like being. I cannot work ever at home unless I'm forced. I can't sit there and make calls because I want to go watch movies or do something else. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can't do. That. And then another question that I can ask because I know the answer is, um, are you sitting or are you standing? If I'm typing, I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going into my, you know, I'm getting a lot of calls going on, then I'm standing, I'm pacing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. I want my blood going, I want it to be up. Good. All right, Colton, what does your week look like? <clears throat> so I have blocked off three hours, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then uh, sprinkle in an hour or two on Mondays and Fridays. So that's basically what I do. Cool. All right, and then um, same question I almost just asked David, like when during the day and then where? So uh, mon uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's uh, three hours in the morning, usually nine to 12, just blocked off. Uh, and then if I have time at four or five, I try to sprinkle in an evening or two a week uh, we catch people at different times. Um, Mondays and Fridays, I'll change it up um, just where I'm able to squeeze it in. Um, I actually work well from the house. I don't get distracted at all at the house. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, we already drive you. enough, so I've been doing fine with that. I have a stand-up desk at my house and a dual monitor and uh, just stand there and work through the phone calls. All right, what well, questions would you have for William and his schedule? Good questions to ask William. I have one kind of Yeah, go for it. Is there a particular meeting usually on Mondays? I have a lot I'm catching up on from the weekend, showings on the weekend, offers, things like that. Usually just have a lot going on on Monday. Um, and then Friday, kind of gearing up all my appointments and stuff for the weekend. So I knew that if I do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I could always have that time blocked off. Yeah. Uh, question I was going to have is, do you, you know, he had his tally marks of wanting ten conversations. Do you have any goal in mind for each of those days, or? Yeah, my goal, <clears throat> my goal each week is to have sixty conversations and three appointments set. I uh, usually get the appointments uh, goals, but I haven't. I usually don't reach sixty conversations. It's really hard it, it's, to get sixty conversations. Man, um, I can't make. Four I'm usually, yep. Yeah, Probably on average in the 30 range for conversations, but I fix I 
it's 60 minutes or two. And then are those time blocks you're doing, is that, are you, is that just kind of outbound <coughs> prospecting and lead follow-up, or is that also just conducting the actual job part of following up with active clients or, um, yeah, mostly just thinking like active clients and things that are under contract or whatnot? No, no, so I don't want to be bouncing back in between activities. So I, I close my email during that block and just focus on the phone calls and then you kind of get into a rhythm and just start working through it faster. Because mm. yeah. I, I used to kind of bounce around and it just takes so much longer to get through so much. Right. Yeah. What, uh, what do you guys think is prime time selling time for real estate? What do you think? It can be different. There's no right or wrong answer, but what have you found to be your prime time of like getting getting those conversations with folks. Where's your best luck? No luck? What do you think? You like morning? Um, you're able to get people on the phone and stuff in the morning for you? It's just when I know I can control my day. Yeah. Afternoon, you don't know what's got going on because something happened in the morning that mm -hmm. calls me. Yeah, that's good. Um, anybody else? What's your prime time selling time? I do uh, call blocks 10 to 12 um, on okay. Monday, and then usually have them on Wednesday for two hours, kind of depending on the schedule, but usually in the morning and afternoon. Right, good. And then I still kind of follow up on appointments and all that, but of course, the Brian said earlier in the morning, I prefer that and kind of get out of control when phone calls start happening or phone calls. It also allows people to call back in the yeah. afternoon, and I can have this kind of big time throughout the day. Yeah, so there's no right or wrong answer to this. It's it's what works best for you, and then also it might be what works for your your niche of clients. Like you might have clients that uh, they can't take any phone calls at all during the day, but you can easily get them on on the phone at night. Um, but the big thing, uh, I just finished listening or reading to uh, fanatical prospecting, and they said the top or, or fanatical prospectors. Um, the top producers with my note here, essentially they know when they maximize their prime time selling time. So top producers maximize their prime time selling time. So in, in all of these examples, people are kind of conscientious about those times and they really try to dial in and plug in during those times. So you need to think of for yourself, when's your prime time selling time and then are you blocking things accordingly? Is it part of your schedule? Uh, I had to learn this many years ago, which is um, I try to, as best as I can, never schedule a home inspection in the morning, um, unless it's maybe on a Friday is where I'll make an exception, but usually I'm in control of, of kind of the inspection time, or I at least lead my client to picking times that work best for me, and so if I can push them to even a 12 p.m. Um, inspection or a 3 p.m. inspection, uh, that works best for me because then I can maximize my prime time selling time, which is in the morning. If I get a home inspection at 9 a.m., basically my day my day's done in, in regards to prospecting or following up because that's going to throw my schedule all the way, um, you know, off, off tilt, kind of to, to Rodney and Kevin's point of trying to control my morning um, so that you know, can get some of my other stuff done throughout throughout the rest of the day. But that also goes back to one of my opening points of there's the business and there's the job. The business is generating leads and getting new business. Um, if you let the job get in the way of that, you know, you'll you'll be out of out of business. So what do you have on your um, PowerPoint slide, Jay? Um are we gonna get into the I have a few different things. Are we able to pull the <coughs> computer browser? Yeah. Uh, how many of you have a CRM system? So everybody kind of has something. How many, uh, I, we use Follow Up Boss. I know I've been meeting with a bunch of folks about Follow Up Boss. That's why I, I kind of asked to teach this class. How many are using Follow Up Boss? Okay, good bit. Um, are others using Buffini? Or who's using Buffini? Are you guys using Buffini? Anybody using another CRM? What are you using? Um, just getting started, I found a free one. Okay, that's dangerous. Okay. Giving it a try. All right, um, any other CRMs? 
How many are using a box full of note cards? Or at least maybe a Google spreadsheet or, or a, a Excel sheet. So looks like it's follow-up boss or or Buffini. Um, follow, this is uh, our follow-up boss right here. Um, and so you know, CRM system is just a database of names, phone numbers, and email addresses. Um, and I think I forget if I put this in the email, but anybody know what the best CRM is? Yeah, yeah that one, the one that you use. Um, but that that really is quite factual. Whether it's Buffini or Follow -up Boss, it's only as good as as the person who's using it and touching it and uh, adding names to it, moving things around. You know, with Buffini, if you have somebody who just gave you three referrals last week and you saw have them categorized as a C, and you're only contacting them once every you know four months or whatever, uh, then even that CRM system is flawed because you're not using it. Um, so you need to kind of be moving some people around. So Tommy, okay. what do, what do you do to uh, remind yourself to call someone again? Mm, okay. Um, so in follow up boss, similar to other CRMs. Um, you can have different notifications and, and reminders, and so maybe maybe that's where we'll kind of switch into like how we each use it. We each have the same CRM system, but we use it very differently. So um, for me personally, I'm in the office, try to be in the office, uh, you know, Monday through Friday, first thing in the morning, get all my stuff done in the morning, and then by lunchtime, I'm taking appointments or, or doing some things. But for me, uh, the very first thing I do when I log into Follow Up Boss is there's a task section in Follow Up Boss. And so that's gonna be a blending of both the job and the business. It's gonna be making sure an earnest money deposit got collected. It's gonna be making sure I sent off my inspection uh, request. Uh, so it's gonna have some tasks like that. It's also gonna have some task of, hey, you just got this new lead yesterday. You need to make your third phone call attempt to them today. Uh, it's also going to blend in past clients of, hey, it's been two months that this person closed. You need to send them a, a text saying, wow, I can't believe it's already been two months. And so my tasks are very specific, uh, set up to what we call action plans. And it, it's, it's some of that admin type of stuff. It's also some lead follow-up. And so for me, I knock out all my tasks. But then I also use um, essentially hot sheets. So that is leads daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly. And I've kind of categorized people into one of those categories based off of how frequently I think my communication um, needs to be with them. And they stay in the lead section until I actually meet, meet them. So that would be the one flaw I think with the Buffini system is there's nothing for a lead. When I was using Buffini, the only time somebody ever made it into my Buffini system was when I already had them under contract. Um, but if it was somebody I had, I met at an open house, or if it was an online lead, they usually didn't make it into the system because you know I don't know what letter to put them in uh, for how frequently I needed to put a conversation. So the nice thing is you can do kind of leads daily, or people who I'm actively showing houses to, or we're talking about getting their house listed, and I need to be either talking to them daily, or mindful of them daily, or I want them mindful of me daily. Uh, and then same thing with weekly, monthly, and quarterly so you know my quarterly folks are somebody who they're gonna sell sometime next year or you know they're waiting to to retire before before they list um, monthly is somebody who um, you know they might be waiting for a lease to end in May uh, and so all the way up until May I'm gonna be kind of peppering them more on a monthly basis um, so that's how I use it but the task pop up and as a reminder I clear through those but some of that is then dictated by one action plan that I put them in that we need well, yeah, what about what you yeah so that's what I used to do is the, the task system uh, and that was tasks started started really piling up and also I wanted to separate my prospecting time from my admin work time they want it to be mixed so I'm not jumping back and forth I wanted to focus on doing great at prospecting while I'm doing that and just focus on the admin. And I also wanted to prioritize who I'm calling first. So I wanted to call new leads first. And I found a system uh, in the Follow Up Boss Help Center called the Melville Method. Um, an agent named Ryan Melville created it. And 
what I do is I create smart lists and there are basically tabs on it. And if someone's on my daily list, any new lead that comes in is gonna be on daily. When I call them through the app on my phone, they come off the daily list for 24 hours, then they pop up the next day. And then weekly, they'll come. after I call them, they'll pop back up a week later, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly. <clears throat> and then I have it uh, set up for quarterly for past clients. And then I work through them like that because I wanna call the new leads first in the daily tab and then I work going that way. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. So I put Tommy in here as an example. Um, and if you go to the help center, they've got a whole tutorial on it. You just have to look up Ryan Melville method. Yeah. And I'll show you how to do it. But basically on each tab, uh, it says last call was more than one day ago. And then the stage is daily. Then Tommy's in here. And the source is past client. And the stage is daily. If I change it to weekly, I'll switch to weekly. And then um, while I'm here, something else cool that I learned how to do is send postcards. Using a website called AM Cards. used to use a Mac. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there oh we go. I have to follow up Walsh. Yeah, so that's what's really cool about this uh, postcard thing. And you can see I send brownies sometime. uh, sometimes. I use those sparingly because they're pretty expensive, but as a closing gift or a thank you for a referral, I'll send brownies. You can also send uh, gift cards, things like that. And then Bam, he's got a postcard and they get this postcard in the mail. And this guy here, 53266 yeah. Whitney Road. So, right quick. pretty cool. You can send it right from the CRM. So, I've had a lot of people that I follow up with say that they received the card and uh, it's really quick and easy. I'll be careful with that. So, kind of going to <clears throat> what, what the stage is, especially if you're already in, you know, Buffini, is uh, those smart lists. <clears throat> you just have more options. You can fine tune how frequently you want to be in touch with some folks. It's not just a 30, 60 or 90. Um, you know, there's gonna be some people that you want to be in a lot more communication with and, and some folks you want a lot less communication. But um, similar to the Buffini system, as soon as you make that contact, it goes away until the next time you have to do it. Um, and then even in the nuances of, of the best CR, CRM system is the one that you use, we, we changed the stage, but technically Ryan Melville, the person who started it, he, did, he keeps the stage the same, but he adds a tag for his smart list, and then he creates his smart list based off of a tag. Um, so it, There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Yeah, there's, there's you know, it's, it's kind of how you want to use it and, um, and how you're kind of categorizing stuff. So. so what I do is I, I go into the app and I've got my different stages here on my smart list. So I go into daily, there's Tommy. You can call him right from the app. He'll start calling his phone. What's the definition of the stage? It's whatever you want it to be. It's really whatever you want it to yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. Like what is it for? Well, I use it for how often I want to be following up with them. So it's like so, an action plan? And so then, my stages are daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. So stage is just kind of where they're where they're at and so it could be um, it, it's really however you want to organize your system but it could be here's my person's a buyer and so their stage is buyer it could be that they're under a contract and so they're pending or ratified it could be that they are a renter that could be a stage so it's it, it's all how you want to organize it. it's how you want to organize it. Yeah. Well, it's with action plan yeah yeah action plan is really Pertaining to the stage, or what's your uh, um, tags? tags? So, no, action plan, um, action plan is something that you create, and it's just a list of 
um, anything you want. And there's a brow, there's a whole library full of it mm -hmm. um, from other agents. If other agents have shared their stuff. Um, yeah, a lot of mine are copied from other agents. So there's a public user base in Follow Boss, and you can copy uh, drip campaigns from other realtors. But you can the you can copy somebody else's action plan. You can create your own. You can take somebody's and edit it. But <coughs> an action plan. Um, is several things. One, it's those tasks or those pop-up reminders telling you when you should do something. So like, um, let's say you wanna ask for a review the 21st day after you're under contract with somebody. On 21st day, it would be a task for you that day of, hey, you should call your client and ask them to put a review for you on Google. Uh, or it could be an automated email too. So all these are automatic emails. So these go out on certain days. And so you can, you can um, you know, create an email on the front end that you wanna send to all of your past clients every time on a year since they bought their houses, they're gonna get this email that, that looks personal from them and it says, hey, was just thinking of you, can't believe it was one year ago that you bought your house, hope everything is going great. Yours truly, you know, Tommy Sabiga, that can be an automated email or it could be you create a, a, uh, a task that says you should call your client and, and say those things. Um, or it could be on the 365th day, it's telling you you need to switch them to a different different action plan because now they're they're not you know a recently closed class client, now they're a little bit on the longer end. Um, so an action plan is a combination of all those different things. This isn't a good example, this is just straight drip campaign I don't even know which one I clicked on, but this is just, they're gonna send them an email every every single month or so. There's but, a lot of different things you can do with the action plans. But yeah, action plans are kind of all over. So I'll, I'll, I'll Here, give Tommy, you- I wanna show something. Well, so uh, I just called Tommy's phone and this pops up. I can put notes in right here. And when I click save the phone call after we've hung up, you'll see him pop off of that daily list. So that's why I like doing it this way and then he won't pop up again for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And also the notes that I just typed into my phone here will pop up, will already be in here. Um, yeah, cool. Maybe not. What I usually do is I'll type my notes in here while I'm on the phone. I just put my AirPod in and I'll type my notes in here and save it here, but then uh, when I hang up on my phone, it takes them off of the list here. Is there a way to change the phone number that gives you your actual phone number? No. Um, if you're doing, oh, so, um, if you're texting. It, it pops up as my phone number mm -hmm. when I call on here. So it it integrates with your phone. Mm -hmm. If you're doing an auto text, follow up boss, and I think this is like a, a telephone communication system law or something you can only send one text so it'll send you the it'll, it can send an initial text but you can't set up action plans to text somebody every 30 days no no um, i'm saying like when i make a phone call from the app, yeah so um it comes up as when i call on here, here too. oh i click call it should be your it's phone gonna pop up as my showed, phone number. it showed up as william yeah pops up as my phone number so it just integrates with your phone and uh, well, it would be my phone number if it's not in his address book. There's a dialer you can add on, and so maybe you guys have the dialer. I don't know, mm -hmm. but if you're calling uh, with a dialer in the CRM, then your number has to be different. If you're calling from your phone, it'll be your phone number, and um, you can use your follow up boss phone number or you can send uh, via iOS messages and it'll pull up my text messages with him then I usually send text messages from my personal cell phone number so um, so the, the CRM system that we use you can put somebody in an action plan or you can just kind of create these lists but kind of thinking back even if you don't have follow-up boss you can create your own schedule for how you want to be contacting folks and so the, the important takeaway there is do you have every single person on some sort of schedule. If you have a, a database of 100 people, do you know every single time you're gonna call one of those 100 people? Um, is it a date? Is it something that automatically pops up that day to say this is the person you should call or do you have a future note? Um, you know, so the nice thing about the system is it does some of it for us automatically. 
The other nice thing is if you have a contact, and so I've got a bunch of these future tasks where I know I just reached out to a guy who his lease is up in June. So I dialed back 60 days before June 1st, and I put a task on my radar that uh, on that day, I need to follow up with him and see if he's renewing his lease. And so it's just a future task. I put it in there. I can forget about it, you know, for the most part. I'll still do some other touches along the way, but I at least know on that specific day, I need to have him, hey, are you going to renew your, your lease? Um, and so you can kind of create some future tasks. I was just at a um, mastermind event with some of the top realtors in Richmond and Kyle um, Yateman. Yateman? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, he had a good little nugget that I put, put a note on that is after he basically communicates with anybody in his system, he basically assigns a future task you know, for that person. So he doesn't leave any conversations without them thinking through, okay, what's the next future task for this person? And so even if we just um, implemented that in all of our prospecting and follow-up, that would do wonders for, for our um, businesses of, okay, I just talked to this person this week, so future tasks this time, you know, maybe it's two weeks from now, maybe it's tomorrow, depending on kind of what's going on in that person's situation. But if you were to sign something that quickly, uh, that would be huge. What about tell people how you get this and what, it, what does it cost? Is it monthly, yearly? Yeah, so, so follow-up boss, it's $69 a month for an individual plan. If you sign up for a year, it's, it's $57 a month. So you basically, yeah, I think get two months free. So it's 684 a year. So it's right in line with, with um, the Feeny and, and all the other CRM systems. Um, I would be cautious of the free ones because the free ones, in essence, is saying, hey, please give me every single one of your contact information and get, you know, go through the whole burden and, and um, tedious, tedious actions of doing that because then you, you won't, you won't want to leave, or if not, they do have all, all of your clients' information. So I'd be, I'd be cautious about that. Well, but yeah, like, relatively low cost. One thing that was nice about it for me is, uh, first of all, I'm out of date on this stuff. Sure. When I first started, CRM was top producer, and it came on square floppy disks. So, uh, but it did bring over everything in my phone, um, and. Uh, I was able to just scroll down and tag people who didn't have real estate licenses because there were 900 people in my address book. Right. And it turns out all but 62 of them had real estate licenses. Yeah. And that simplified that that process really rather nicely for me. Right. But I don't know if they're any good. I was just looking to get started before I decided to spend money. Yeah. Okay. Tommy, what about uh, like <coughs> teams and sharing and all that stuff? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, so uh, especially if you're a team leader, what's nice is you can kind of see everything that's going on, and then you can also reassign leads and reassign people. You can have collaborators, and so um, like if I'm listing a house and somebody else is buying a house, we can be collaborators on that one specific profile. We can see you know the communications that are that each are taking place. Um, but the thing that that I really like about it is. I was meeting with Laura and talking about this. Uh, I used to have a Google Doc sheet of basically the same canned emails I would send after various stages of a contract. And so like after I get a buyer ratified, this is the email I'd send to the listing agent. This is the email I'd send to the buyer. This is the, the um, email I would send to the title company. And, um, and I used to copy and paste those in Follow Boss you can create those those action plans to automate some of that stuff you know, for us. And so we have an action plan for a ratified buyer, we have an action plan for a ratified seller. And so it spells out the same thing, the same task, and it can walk somebody through exactly how to get a contract from contract to close. So especially for my new agents who they don't, they don't know, okay, I got a contract, now what happens? I can say, hey, put them on this action plan, and literally it walks the agent through the process just as much as it does the, um, the client, and so this is our action plan. For and then on the 26th day that you've been under mm -hmm. contracts, so you're usually past the inspection and appraisal at that point, getting close to closing, it automatically sends this review email. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been getting reviews with that just automatically sending. So 
don't even have to remember to send it to them. Yeah, and so it, um, it does transaction type of stuff. After somebody's closed, we have a different action plan for a recently closed um, you know, buyer or seller, and those are all pretty timely where you know, going back to the, the six month house anniversary or one year house anniversary, it's gonna send it to you. There's one of those emails. I, I try to be a little bit tricky on it too, so don't tell all my secrets, but some of these emails of like ratified, how are things going? Uh, it's basically like a one sentence, hey, you know, I'm keeping an eye on everything on my end, how's everything, do you need anything from me? But it feels like it's a very personal email that just, that I was thinking of on, on that 24th day, um, you know, but it's automated for me. And so, uh, so that's what's kind of nice on the actual admin side of getting the job done, but then there's also <laughs> coupled with the business of following up with leads and and um, trying to get them to respond somehow. The Fanatical Prospecting book, it had some, it rattled off some stats that I had to listen to like 10 times over to think about touches, but um, it basically said, and this is a book for just all type of selling, not just real estate selling, so it's, it's across industries, but it said you need about one to three touches to re-engage with an active customer. So even your active customers, you're, you're still having to follow up with them or call them or, or you know, text them or email them at least three times to get them to, um, to re-engage. One to five touches for someone who is within the buying window and familiar with you. Three to 10 touches for someone who has a high degree of familiarity but is not in the buying window. Five to 12 touches to engage a warm inbound lead. So five to 12, it's a warm inbound lead, still takes five to 12 touches. Uh, five to 20 touches for someone who has some familiarity and buying window could or could not be just yet. And then 20 to 50 touches to engage a cold prospect. Uh, and so that kind of illuminates a little bit when we talked at the very beginning of that prospecting for gold. Uh, you have to sift through a whole bunch of stuff in order to actually get them up and going and maybe into a into a contract and that's going to vary depending on how familiar they are with you if they're in the buying window or the selling window if you will um, or not um, and different things like that but it takes lots of touches and so the nice thing about having a system is it can systemize you know those touches it can it can put you on a plan or a path to vary those touches because you might not want to call somebody every single day you know, you can have a different plan or a path. It could be a call one day, text one day, email the other day, um, you know, some different things like that. So. Manage your social media stuff. Uh, no. Mm -mm. No. Sorry. <laughs> Probably better for social media to not be automated anyway. What, what, is, kinda, what is kinda nice though is it can, it does do a social media search for your people. So, um, Oh yeah, it'll search the Twitter. It'll do a social profile right here. Oh, that's cool. So I can, I can kind of link some of their stuff together. Yeah. And you can see I, I put notes every time um, when I'm talking to folks so I can remember everything. I was thinking of social media stuff you do was just for branding, not the larger properties or anything. Right. Like yeah, we're gonna do that. Um, I wrote down just a bunch of other little nuggets just from the fanatical prospecting book because I think it all hits on this topic and really this is where my wheels got turning of you know we should we should talk more about this but um, fanatical prospectors prospect anytime good times and bad times they're always carrying business cards they don't make excuses they don't whine uh, and they're not complaining um, in essence fanatical prospectors create their own own destiny uh, that kind of couples with another note that was later on in, the, in the, the back of the book of, in essence, you control three things, your actions, your reactions, and your mindset. So I've, I've shared this with my team a whole bunch of, at the end of the day, you can only control what you control. You can't make somebody sign a contract. You can't um, make the seller accept your offer. The only thing you control is your actions, your reactions, and your mindset. Um, so if we think about our amount of business, um, <coughs> for how many houses do we want to sell, we can't control how many houses we sell this year, but we can control how we're planning our weeks, how much prospecting we're doing, how much, um, how many phone calls are, are we making, how many appointments you know, are we attempting, stuff like that. So those are things that we can control. Um, the top producers, the top prospectors, 
Um, in essence, prospecting is the hardest part of the day. The thing that separates the top folks from others is that they get over it and do it anyway. Um, it's, it's hard and uncomfortable and, and maybe not the easiest thing in the world to make these outbound calls. The difference between the folks who are really selling and the folks who aren't is they get over it and, and do it anyways. Um, not about what you sold, but what you will sell today. So I, I've said this a bunch too, of you can have a really good week, a really good month, really good year, no matter what in real estate, when you come back, it's, it's your first day on the job. Uh, they also talked about the rule of replacement, which the math on this kind of makes sense, but uh, the question they posed in the book is if you had 30 leads, and I'll mess up the number, but let's just say, yeah, let's say you had 30 leads and you have a 10% conversion ratio, uh, out of your 30 leads, if one of those people goes under contract, how many leads do you have the next day? How many would you say? If you had 30 and you gratify one, how many do you have the next day? Two. Why 10%? two? 10%? Huh? 10% of 33? Well, yeah, so the, the essence of it is some people would think, well, you still have 29 leads. The reality is, no, you don't have 29 leads because 25 or 26 or whatever it is, they're never gonna buy a house. They're, they're not really leads because of that, that percentage. So you really have to replace that whole percentage because one of those folks got it ratified. And so the law of replacement is when that stuff happens, you have to get you have to be getting more leads. And it goes back to the, the Pareto principle that we started with of 80% of your alts come from 20% of your efforts. So that one person goes under contract, it's not, it's not a one for one, it's actually, you gotta get a whole lot more people to replace it because of those conversion ratios or the percentage likelihood that they're actually gonna you know, buy a house. So um, that really, really convicted me, um, you know, especially because the way I do my smart list, I can see who are in the <coughs> categories. So if somebody moves over into the ratified uh, category, I think, oh, it's all right, I still got these folks, but you know, the reality is I need to fill that bucket up a whole lot more. Um, This was an Arnold Palmer quote, which is the more I practice, the luckier I get. Uh, thinking through real estate and prospecting, and, you know, in essence, the, the more I prospect, the more I, I just fall into deals. Um, have you ever had a deal just kind of come to you and it's like, oh wow, that was pretty good? Is it because you're really lucky or is it because you've been doing all that, all that practicing, all that prospecting? Um, I would probably venture to say it's, it's probably from all that, all that practice. Um, this is a, a key line that I think if you walked away with anything, it might be kind of this mindset, which is fanatical prospectors, they wake up each morning and they think about how they're gonna get in front of people today. So the fanatical prospectors, they wake up each morning thinking, how am I gonna get in front of people today? Uh, bad prospectors would say, should I get in front of people today? Uh, the top ones think, how am I gonna do it? Uh, and so maybe even think, think to yourself today, how many people have you interacted with or, or talked to? Um, you know, here it is, almost three o'clock on a Wednesday, have you gotten in front of that many people? And getting in front of people could be lots of various forms. It could be you actually called somebody and had a conversation with, with them. It could be that you posted something <coughs> on social media. It could be that you sent a postcard. It could be that you sent a handwritten note. It could be that you popped by their house. Um, could be that you ran into them at Starbucks, could be that you met them for coffee um, at a coffee shop, but you know, the, the fanatical prospectors every single day, they're thinking, how am I gonna get in front of people today? Um, yeah, you got something out of it? Well, I think how has been answered by this system. The mm -hmm. question is if, yeah. are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. Is this kind of, kind of shows you how you're gonna do it because you have the plan to do it. I, I mean, I would, Kind of tells you. Yeah. And so the smart list for me on this, um, it's not necessarily always uh, them being reminded of who I am, but a lot of times me reminding myself of, of who they are and that I need to be thinking of that person, whether it's me looking on MLS mm -hmm. forum or um, even looking on like Facebook for somebody who's posted a house or whatever it is. A lot of times it's just making my memory uh, think of them, but in real estate, you, we want to be top of mind to them, so it's got to work both both ways. Um, so, I'm trying to think of some, some other things there. So, yeah, when 
uh, did you have? I've got some more nuggets that I'll go over. Oh, yes. Uh, I've only done note cards and Buffini and then this. But I'll, I'll tell you the way I came across this is there was a, a mastermind of like the top 100 realtors in Richmond, I don't know, five, six years ago that I was invited to. And I was switching over to, to creating the team and thinking about CRM systems. And my sole purpose of going to this mastermind was to try to figure out which CRM system should I use. And at the time it was between follow-up boss and maybe like top producers or peak producers or one of these other ones. And um, I asked a bunch of, of realtors, what CRM are they using? And so I asked Mike Hogan, he said follow-up boss. I asked Brad Rucker, he said follow-up boss. I asked Daniel Keith, he said follow-up boss. He's like, all right, well, I should probably use follow-up follow boss. So that's how I came about it. So. I've got a few more things. Uh, so this is what I do the first five days when a lead comes in. Uh, the first day, I'll actually call a couple times the first day that it comes in. Uh, but after the second or third time calling, I'll send a text message. Voicemail the second day, call, and then text message after. And I, I switch back between them because some people like to text, some people don't ever listen to their voicemail. but. Really, the ultimate goal is I'm trying to get them on the phone. So my text messages are usually asking them a question that's leading, that's just trying to get a response from them. Uh, the same with the voicemail. So, um, and then after, the, if, if I go five days with no response at all, I'm also getting emails dripped in periodically, I'll switch them to the weekly stage, start following up at, uh, once a week. But usually I can get someone to text me back at least. Do you still use a system that led to you intentionally just go to voicemail, or is that built into the uh, slide broadcast? No, it's not. Not in this one. You can integrate that with this. Actually, you can pull up a whole list on Follow Up Boss mm -hmm. and integrate it with uh, those voicemail drop companies, and you could target a whole list without the voicemail at all of them. Just won't be from your personal phone number. There's yeah. a lot of cool integrations. I say David was going to share this because um, I mean we. We use it, we like it, but I mean, we, we barely scratched the surface on everything that it's capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we're still pretty- Here's some things that you can pretty do. Pretty naive and, and, and ignorant to it, um, so. Another great book uh, is Exactly What to Say for Real Estate Agents by Phil Jones. So I made a, um, a cheat sheet with some of my favorite things to say because I don't wanna call people and just say, hey, I'm just checking in because that, that sends a message that you're just gonna keep calling them until they buy something. So I try to bring something of value. So I always ask a question. I'll say uh, something like, hey, just had a minute to get back to you. I saw this house, I'm not sure if it'd be for you, but it's coming soon and can right go. I'll try to say something, uh, hey, not sure if it'd be helpful, but I could run some numbers for your home. Try to ask them a question instead of just saying, hey, just checking in, because just checking in usually doesn't lead to too much. So definitely recommend that book. Here's some of the things that you can do with Follow Up Boss. Uh, of course, the drip emails. Uh, something that's great with Follow Up Boss is the lead flow. So no matter where uh, a lead's coming from, any website, it usually integrates with Follow Up Boss. Uh, so if you're getting leads from any website, it'll go into Follow Up Boss and you can have the, the emails automatically start when that lead comes in from that website. And uh, you can automate all, all sorts of different things. Anything you can really think of can be automated as soon as the lead comes in. So it starts reaching out to them for you. Uh, a couple other things that I do, I use a website called Zapier uh, for websites that don't um, integrate directly with Follow Up Boss. You can use Zapier as a workaround. So when a lead comes into Follow Up Boss, or even if I manually put it in, I have it sent to my Google Contacts, and then my Google Contacts is synced to my phone. So all my leads, all my clients, their contact info is already on my phone. So if they call me back, I know who it is every time, and I don't have to spend time manually putting people's numbers and info into my phone. I uh, also do the same with Constant Contact. I send a weekly email. So every single person that's in my CRM and comes into my CRM, 
automatically gets sent, their email gets sent to Constant Contact <coughs> and they're subscribed to my weekly email list. Um, these are things that I've played with in the past but I really don't use too much, is you can integrate with automated text systems. Follow-up Boss will only let you send one automated, but uh, there are a couple different websites that you can integrate with Follow-up Boss and as soon as a lead comes in, you can have a schedule of text messages that it's sending. And then, uh, like John was saying, you can do voicemail drops. So a lead could come in and you could schedule Sky slide broadcast to, to drop them a voicemail five minutes later. Um, and th there's a lot of other cool things. You could automate postcards, like AM cards. You can have it automatically send them a postcard when a lead comes in. Do the postcards come from them or do they do like an outside postcard company? Yeah, AM cards is the name of the company. It's outside. Yeah, uh, it but has integrations with but it's on their contact in Follow-Up Boss, and you can yeah. see what postcards in Follow-Up Boss, so it integrates really well. Mm -hmm. And so while you are while you have their contact up, you can just click two times and you send them a postcard, or brownies, or gift cards, or whatever. Um, something else uh, that's not completely necessary, but um, it's cool to have if you want uh, HomeBot and some other home valuation websites. If their address is in Follow-Up Boss, it can pop up an automated um, valuation for their home. So if you pull someone's contact up, their address populated automatically, you can have an idea of what price range their house is in. Um, I wouldn't use that for your listing appointments. But. Yeah, it's one of those things of having a database or a CRM system, a good one, um, the more data you can put into it, the better it, it'll serve you for many years to come. So I'm 10 years in the business. I have a spreadsheet that I start right when I got into real estate and I tracked every single one of my sales and I would put it on a spreadsheet. And um, I, I don't think it was until like year six that I realized I should probably have a zip code in those the addresses that I saved um, so that I could send out a mail. And then there was like another year, I was like, man, I wish I knew what year those houses closed that so I could send them a handwritten note and say, wow, I can't believe it's been four years, but I didn't put that field in there. Um, and now I'm even thinking in this, in this tighter market, it'd be so cool if I could just quickly have some sort of database that I could look at everybody who has a house that's under 1500 square feet or something like that. And I could potentially target them and say, hey, I'm listing this house for 35 you know, with 3,500 square feet, yeah. you know, you think it might be time to upsize or downsize, or if I list a house in a 55 plus neighborhood, if I had a tag in there for folks who I knew would want to be moving into a 55 plus, I could quickly spit out and look at those specific people and, and try to get them back into the game, try to get them back, you know, re-engaged. Uh, and you can do all that stuff with, with follow-up boss. Some of that stuff just automatically pulls, which is pretty, pretty cool but the more data and information and stuff you can put into it, um, the better. And so at least the easiest thing we can do on our end that uh, all of our team's pretty good about is when we write notes, you can, you can search notes. And so if you have somebody who is only looking for a house in Montpelier, you can do a search and, and hit Montpelier and it'll search all the notes. It might search where people's houses are. Um, I have tags for like my past clients, so for the, Santa Claus at the Oakland office on December 1, I can quickly do a search and look for all of my past clients and I can see if they live in Mechanicsville and I can send a, a 200 person email right there on the spot that's, that's personalized, you know, like mail merged um, and invite them to uh, Santa Claus within five minutes. Um, so the more, the more you're using a database system, it's just gonna make it so much easier to get get new business um, you know in the years ahead but man I wish I had done that when I first started in, in, in real estate um, I've kind of tried to go back in retroactively to like add some some information but I uh, had only if I had only done that at the beginning who knows how many you know more houses I could sell right now when I come across these you know potential leads or um, my own listings um, or even if I stumble across a for sale by owner kind of baiting somebody out because of something I, I stumbled upon. So, do you have a question? No. Here, I'll show you what we do all the time. So, uh, if you have a listing coming soon in Henrico and you want to match a buyer up to it, 
you can just type in Henrico and then click on notes. And then everyone that's told me they're looking at Henrico will pop up. Mm -hmm. And I can go through those notes and be like, oh, I remember that person. They did say they were looking for that. So we do that all the time. Because uh, once you get up to a certain amount, it starts getting hard to remember um, what people said they want. It's just a quick way to search it like that. That's why it's great to have all the notes in there for every single person. Yeah, or even thinking about the last conversation you had with somebody. You know, if last time you talked to somebody, they had just gotten diagnosed with wow, cancer. Crazy. You know, you might want to be sensitive to that next time you kind of call them or remembering kids' names. I, I, I went on a little bit of a rabbit hole like this for a little bit, but um, yeah. people really care about their dogs. You remember their, their dog's name and it's in their note, you're going to win some major, major points. Uh, yeah, question. Can you explain like the notes? So like obviously I'm transitioning from Buffini over to follow up loss, but still keeping like a Buffini mindset where still doing like handwritten notes, pop by stuff like that. How do you guys keep track of that? Because it obviously like phone calls are easy to track, emails, texts, all that cool. kind of stuff. So here's what I do. I put my AirPod in and I'm talking to them on my phone. And so while I'm actual handwritten notes though. Like the, the, do we we don't uh, track, talk if, to if I write a handwritten on? note. Mm -hmm. I would individually, I would probably mark each customer that you want, to, or each client that you want to do that with. Top right corner, action plan, no, um, oh sorry, um, uh, tasks, mm -hmm. where is that tab? Yeah. Uh, it's in it's the dark on. spot, inbox. I, I guess it's up there, I don't know. So here's what I do, I just put a note like that, uh -huh. and then I star it, and then the next time I call them, I'll remember that I wrote them a note last time, and yeah. talked about, his dog max. So you can really do it a bunch of different ways. You could put it in notes. You could put it. You could you could put it in notes and then start. Or I I oftentimes I'll put it in the log call section and notes. Oh okay. Yeah, I put it in the log call. Yeah. Same thing if a text message. Oh. If I send a text if message. Using AM cards. I'll put it as a log call. Um, but that kind of goes back to it's we nice didn't talk here. about this, but as a team standpoint, it's pretty cool because you can do uh, reporting and you can do tracking and there's a leaderboard. And the leaderboard is essentially a point system that rewards all the team um, and it sees who's who's essentially the top of the leaderboard um, and the nice thing there is it has nothing to do with how many deals you do it has to do with all of your activities which goes back to everything that we're talking about so you get 500 points for a scheduled appointment you get 100 points for an actual conversation you get out of like 10 points for a phone call attempt you get two points for a text message, you get one point for an email. So think about that point system and think about your prospecting and think about how many points you would have. Um, everybody likes to send emails and texts. Those are the cheapest, easiest points. Uh, the actual appointments, getting face-to-face, belly-to-belly, those are the, the ones that actually are worth the most. Um, we did a fun little, little uh, examination of this, David and I, and. Uh, for his point system, basically every point equals a dollar. Um, the way his math kind of worked out. So if you thought about it that way, that every point equals a dollar, and it would pay you $500 to meet with somebody, or it would pay you a dollar to text message somebody, which are you gonna try to do? Meet them. You're probably gonna try to meet them, right? <laughs> right. Um, and so that's almost the way the math kind of works out in the, in the point system. but. Um, I forget where I went off on that tangent other than uh, it's pretty neat that there's kind of a leaderboard from like a team standpoint and it kind of tracks all that stuff. So handwritten note, that would be an interesting, and they do have a little like chat sec section where you can ask them to add new features. That'd be a neat feature to point out in the realm of, of tracking um, any like direct mail correspondence. That's really something that's great things. about Follow Boss too is in the, uh, Maybe it's a bot or something already. In the help center, are, yeah, they have a suggest a feature section and people can upvote it. And when something's really getting upvoted a lot, uh, follow up boss will add things all the time. So uh, if you want something added, you just put it into the um, under consideration there and they're always adding something new or tweaking something every month to make things better. What other questions are there? I got yeah, go for it. a question. Every time you say something, I have three more questions. Sure. How easy is this to use out of the box without 
happened to take a class or anything with him. What I did is I just called Follow Up Boss than MLS. Way. It's easy. I call follow up boss and they set it up for me. Yeah, I think it's fairly easy. I mean, you can import all your contacts using a CSV file. Mm -hmm. So I took all of my Buffini database and dumped it right in. Yeah. Um, you know, you do have to kind of go in there and then recalibrate and put people in action plans or stages, and you do have to fiddle with it. Yeah. Um, so it's not going to do that for you. But um, but I would think out the box you can kind of do some things because you can you can just copy other people's action plans. Um, and so so yeah. On the thing you mentioned earlier about wishing you were included information, can you go to this left side? Export, uh, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. Would you be able to go into MLS and pull, you know, export your past sales and find a way to import that information into this so that you could match them up with your? Client records would it have to be Yeah, it's probably probably yeah. downloading a CSV file and then just matching the um, the category name naming. Um, so if you cool if you do that after the fact, then you're gonna have some issues with merging duplicates. But yeah. it, it does have sophistication where it can merge duplicates. Yeah. So you you would just probably install it as a duplicate. That would be a cool thing for what you were talking about. So, so I would say, I mean, maybe you guys noticed too. I mean, William's way more techy on some of this stuff than I am with with the ZAPs and the AM cards and the sending some brownies and yeah, home bots and stuff. But um, yeah. you know, with the the follow up is it's it's pretty simple. It's making sure that you have some sort of plan to reach out to folks and that you're doing it consistently, yeah. that your schedule's allowing for it, that you're blocking for it, and that that you're actually doing it. Um, the more organized, I think. Uh, the better, but I mean, even even back to my note cards, I had um, I had these sectioned off where these were kind of the phone calls I'd make on Monday, these were the calls I'd make on Tuesday, and I'd kind of shuffle folks around and, and move them around. Um, but I kind of I, I, I had to do that so <coughs> I could keep track of, of certain things. Um, you know, the other hard part in, in all of prospecting or following following up with folks is. Um, is adding either new cards, adding stuff to follow boss. Like I got two leads today that I just remembered um, that I need to add add into my system so that I can start following up with them. Um, otherwise, they're just going to sit on my phone. I'm going to forget about them in, in a couple more days. So it does work uh, on your PC and mobile, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does it link to your incoming phone call so that you get a call that comes in and you want to make it into a Contact, you can just move it a couple of clicks. Or oh, yeah. So I can, I can put in a new contact on my phone. Uh, just I, add. I have, a, I have a zap where if it's a new contact that comes in a follow up boss, it adds it to my contacts. Um, the lead flow is pretty cool. I was just talking to Big Z yesterday, and he get, he got like a realtor.com lead, and he was like, you know, how do I, you know, why didn't they get my automated text message? Like, I thought it was supposed to be an action plan. And you just go to lead flow, follow boss already recognized that that's now a lead source, realtor.com, and all you had to do was point it to the right action plan. Um, I got some sort of random online lead, I don't know, fast agent or agent pronto or home snap, and follow boss recognized that that was some sort of lead and immediately put it onto um, cool. you know, an action so plan. So if someone calls me uh, while I'm out and about, I can start putting uh, the notes of our conversation in the app. And uh, save it, and then it pops up onto the desktop, so it syncs seamlessly. Whether you put it in on the app or you put it in on the desktop. Other questions? All right. If you really like high tech, yeah, then that's there. Cool there's some crazy advanced things that you can do on Follow Up Boss. Oh my goodness. These are uh, some of the YouTube channels that I've watched, um, and some of them do crazy automations. Um, if you if you sync it to a home search website, uh, you can get a text message when someone's searching on the site again and see all the homes that they were looking at. Um, there's some really, really crazy advanced things that you can do. Um, and you can pretty much find it all on YouTube. But at the end of the day, you just need to make phone calls. Yeah, one of the, and maybe we'll end on this unless there's other questions, but one of the other quotes I just had from the book was, to succeed in sales, simply talk to lots of people every day. 
Uh, and here's the exciting thing, there's lots of people every single day. Um, so it's just a matter of, are you talking to folks? How are you doing it? Uh, and then are you um, blocking the time or are you thinking about, okay, every single day, how am I getting in, in front of people? Um, and I think as the disclaimers, it's gonna be five times harder going back to the, the 80% of your rewards, 80% of your sales are gonna be from 20% of your efforts. So it means you gotta try a whole lot. Um, so any other thoughts or questions? Well, we'll be around if, if there's anything we can answer um, or show you on, on the laptop. Uh, there's a whole lot to it. Always glad to help one another out. We've, we've had some bumps and bruises along the way. We're still figuring things out ourselves. Um, we do it differently. You know, uh, William said he only prospects and like blocks that time out. I do a blended model of I'm doing some business stuff and some job stuff. And um, David, you're pro are you probably bouncing back and forth or are you just kind of focusing on some outbound? I try to focus mostly on outbound, but invariably I'm gonna have to, for some reason, take an emergency call mm -hmm. with the client I have. I try to avoid it. Yeah, just but have I, to figure out what works best for you. I found that I, I just get distracted too easily. Um, Tommy's better at 